Do you have Netflix? I do, and I was watching the new season of Orange is the New Black when I saw this scene. The dishwasher wants Saturday off for his pickleball league finals. You willing to wash dishes after your Saturday shift? Pickleball? It's like badminton meets ping pong meets tennis. You in for dishes or not? Whoa, they mentioned badminton. <laughs> like, they never mentioned badminton on TV shows. We have so many references with like baseball, basketball, even the English language has so many baseball and basketball words in it. But we don't see badminton represented in pop culture like ever. So I was very excited when I saw this. So I decided to put together all the times that badminton has been mentioned in pop culture outside of a badminton context. And unfortunately, this is a very short video because there's not many, but let me show you. Hey guys, I'm Badminton Becky. If this is your first time here, I'm an American living and playing badminton in China. Please hit the subscribe button and follow along as I talk about all things badminton and try to be a top player in my city. Okay, now Orange is the New Black is not the only Netflix show that have a small little badminton reference. I also saw this on Queer Eye, the last season. Kansas City guys, we made it! <laughs> in order to understand someone, you need to walk a mile in their shoes, or a high heel, or wheels. I was super curious about what it was. It was just a really quick fleeting shot. So I Googled it and it turns out the world's largest shuttlecocks are in America. They're in Kansas City, Missouri, and there is an art museum and they have four giant shuttlecocks outside their art museum. They are each 18 feet tall and there are three on like the front lawn and one on the back lawn. It's meant to represent that like the building is the net and it was people playing. So it's like an odd roadside attraction. You can go visit it for free. You can walk around and take pictures. Apparently on the internet, I found there was some controversy that when they were originally installed in 1994, the locals didn't like it, but now they're like a focal point and and they were in a very popular TV show, which is cool. The next little reference one of my friends found in The New Yorker. New Yorker is famous for their cartoons and they happen to have this badminton one. Obviously you can tell this is for Americans by Americans because with the little the little red tops, that's obviously a plastic shuttle. And obviously they're talking about playing outdoors because no indoor shuttle would get lost in gutters. So this is clearly for an American audience that thinks badminton is just some fun outdoor sport. A little annoying in that sense that it's perpetuating that, but it's still a badminton reference, so still cool. Let me show you one that like just makes me mad. This one was a few years ago, right at the Olympics, and it's on the Jimmy Fallon show. I can't find the whole clip, but I found this small part. Let me show you. <laughs> Obviously they're trying to be funny, but obviously it makes me really mad. <laughs> First off, like badminton players don't wear white. That's, you know, the old fashioned tennis and old fashioned badminton. Badminton players are super smooth and athletic. They are not so nerdy and geeky. This is the feeling of Americans is that badminton players are super nerdy and geeky. And look, they're all like white guys, which is also not true. I mean, if you look at the Olympic team for America, they're mostly Asian Americans. And our top player, who hopefully will be an American citizen too, is actually from China. So there's not a lot of white people playing badminton, and to say that they represent our team 
is, you know, a bit insulting because Asian Americans, they're the ones that represent America and, you know, representation is important. But she's trying to be funny and she's trying to joke. I just hate furthering this stereotype in the minds of Americans. Now let's move to literature because I found a few badminton references in books. First up is in Ayn Rand's The Fountainhead. Don't judge me. You can enjoy and read a book and not prescribe to its political or ideological ideas, okay? Okay, so this is a part, um, just a couple people talking. So Joel Sutton talked about badminton. That was his hobby. It was a patrician hobby, he explained. He was not being common like other men who wasted time on golf. Rourke listened politely. He had nothing to say. You do play badminton, don't you? Joel Sutton asked suddenly. No, said Rourke. You don't, gulped Joel Sutton. You don't. Well, what a pity. Oh, what a rotten pity. I thought for sure you did with that lanky frame of yours. You'd be good. You'd be a wow. I thought for sure we'd beat the pants off old Tompkins anytime while that building's being put up. While that building's being put up, Mr. Sutton, I wouldn't have the time to play anyway. What do you mean you wouldn't have the time? What do you got draftsmen for? Hire a couple extra. Let them worry. I'll be paying you enough, won't I? But then you don't play, what a rotten shame. I thought, sure, that architect who did my building down on Canal Street was a whiz at badminton. But then he died last year. He got himself cracked up in an auto accident. Damn fine, was a fine architect too. And here, you don't play? Mr. Sutton, you're really not upset about it, are you? I'm very seriously disappointed, my boy. But what are you actually hiring me for? What am I what? Hiring me for. Why, to do a building, of course. Do you really think it would be a better building if I played badminton? Okay, later, a few minutes later, um, another character enters and the guy that plays badminton leaves. This other character says, of course, I heard most of it, why shouldn't I? It was very entertaining. There's no way to go about it, Howard. You know what I would have done? I'd have sworn I'd played badminton since I was two years old and how it's the game of kings and earls and it takes a soul of a rare distinction to appreciate it. And by the time he'd put me to the test, I'd have made it my business to play like an earl too. What would it cost you? I didn't think of it. The other character says. So I like this because they certainly respect badminton and it's the, you know, the game of the king of kings and anyone who plays it is not just a common person like those, those louse that play golf. So I do like this, but this book was written in 1945 when badminton was more common and perhaps badminton was a bit more of a gentleman's sport at that time. The next book comes from the esteemed Maya Angelou, I Know Why the Cage Birds Sing, which she published in 1969. And it's just very quick. It says, uh, the Negro organization to whom I appealed for support bounced me back and forth like a shuttlecock on a badminton court. So that's it. <laughs> but I like that she used badminton as her metaphor, as her simile, technically, because people never use badminton as a simile. And again, I know this book is quite old and there's some old dated language in it, but I love Maya Angelou, her writing is amazing, and the fact that she did use a badminton simile in one of her books makes me like her even more. <laughs> and that's basically it. <laughs> that's all I got. I consume a lot of media, you know, I listen to a lot of music, I read a lot of books, I watch a lot of movies, and that's basically all I could find in maybe the past six months or so. <laughs> I haven't found badminton in any music. And of course, I should say that this is Western pop culture. Obviously in China, badminton is much more common. People play badminton in the background of scenes. They play badminton and talk about things. So in especially Chinese media, I'm sure other Asian countries as well, but I'm talking about Western media, more specifically American. We just don't see badminton. And when we do, it's either from a very old source or it's making fun of badminton or not understanding how badminton is actually played. I told you this would be a short video. <laughs> Have you seen other references of badminton in the pop culture world in different kinds of media that come from America or Europe, please for sure let me know in the comments because finding these things, they're like, you know, it's like a little gem inside something you're already watching and you're like, ooh, they just said badminton, that's exciting. So please let me know if you have found any more and I will also keep my eye out, but not many in a long time. We need more badminton and pop culture so people are, get more used to it and people think it's cooler and it's a never ending fight, right? Okay, see you next time. Bye.
koyacağım. İçi koyacağım. Tamam. 